Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play WWF Royal Rumble. In the last episode, we played as Papa Shango, and we played as The Undertaker. And now we're going to play as two more WWE superstars from the first half of 1993. So, one on one, one player, one fall. And I accidentally set the difficulty to 5, but somehow I managed to survive doing that. Anyway, for the first wrestler that I'm going to play as, I'm going to play as... Shawn Michaels. And it appears that our opponent will be The Undertaker this time around. So first part of 1993, the first half of it. 1992 and the first half of 93 were basically the time that Shawn Michaels was on the up and up. He had broken away from Marty Gennari, split up the Rockers, became a bad guy, and had Sensational Sherry accompany him to the ring because, well, she had an infatuation with him. That kind of came to an end because she used she was used as a human shield when Marty Jannetty, Michael's former partner, tried to attack him with the mirror that he used to pose with every time he entered the ring. This caused Sherry to be in a neutral corner when Michaels defended the Intercontinental title, which he had at the time since October of 92, when he defended that at the Royal Rumble, she was in a neutral corner. At that point, Michaels and Sherry basically split up. It wouldn't be done, though, that feud, but he would defend the Intercontinental title again at WrestleMania 9, this time by, against Tatanka, but he would lose by countout. He would still retain the title, though, because it can only be passed from one person to another by pinfall or submission. Anyway... Here's the finisher. It's not the sweet chin music. It's the teardrop suplex that he used between 92 and 93. All you have to do is just press A and B together, or Z on a six-button controller behind a stunned opponent, and you'll do the teardrop suplex. As for the Intercontinental title, he would lose it to Janetti on the May 17th edition of Monday Night Raw that year, but he would get it back a month, about a month later on June 6th to end the feud between him and Janetti once and for all. It should be noted that when he came to the ring at WrestleMania 9, he was accompanied by a new debuting female talent. That talent was Luna Vachon, and she would have a feud with Sherry herself. So that's basically Shawn Michaels in the early part of 1993, the whole first half of that deal. And... Well, since I talked about Shawn Michaels, and I'm playing the Genesis version, it's only right that I play is the only other pretty boy in the game. Well, who could that guy possibly be? It's the model Rick Martel. And we're going to be facing... Really? Yeah, I was surprised when I did, then that happened too. Anyway... I believe they had a feud over Sherry one time. For uh, the affections of Sherry. I think that was back in 92. I'm not quite sure. But by 1993, the model Rick Tart Martel was barely on television. He was basically in the lower card. And the only real thing he did in 1993 that anyone would remember really was co-winning a battle royal with Razor Ramon to take part in a match for the then-vacant Intercontinental title in the second half of 1993. This was because Shawn Michaels was in real life suspended for allegations of steroid use, which he never really admitted to. Nevertheless, he had to vacate the title for some storyline reason, and it it was made vacant, and they made a match to dictate who would do it through a battle royal. And the co-winners were, of course, the model Rick Martel and Razor Ramon, who was actually a, who actually became a good guy by that time. He would lose to Razor Ramon 
at that match. And Razor Ramon would win his first Intercontinental Championship, the first of four that he had. And, well, we're at that point, so I'm going to show off the finisher. Knock him down, press A and B together. When you're at a down opponent's legs, or Z on a six-button controller, and you'll do the Boston Crab. And that's pretty much all she wrote for that match. Now notice the music. Does it sound a little familiar to you? Well, after Rick Martel left the WWE in 1995, the song would later be remixed and used as the theme for WWE superstar Val Venus. I kind of like Venus's version better, but... That's probably just because of childhood bias, because, you know, I grew up with Attitude Era Wrestling. But I still like New Generation, though. And we'll be looking at a little more of it in the next video. So, join me next time, where I play as two more WWE superstars from the first half of 1993. Talk about what they were doing at the time. And also show off some finishers, too, just like I've been doing. So, until then... This is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!